This is a day that our Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. I am Pastor Carol from up in Botno. It is good to be with you today to worship. Pastor Kathy is fine. She is needing, however, to quarantine. So um, here I am. I, I, Catherine, Pastor Kathy and I are not strangers. Um, her family was actually a member of one of the first congregations I served over in Noonan. So we have known one another for quite a while. And you are most blessed to have her as your pastor. I will leave you to read the announcements that are in the bulletin. And do take note of the um, <coughs> flu shots next Monday at the Senior Center. Uh, sounds like it might be a good year to take advantage of that. Do remember to wear your mask as always, especially as Christians, we are called to love and care for one another. If you intend to go to coffee following worship, please remember the social distancing, keep your masks on. Um, I've been informed that chairs have been spaced appropriately, so please do not rearrange the chairs that are down. Is there anything else by way of announcement this morning? If not, our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you to stand as you are able for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus the Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. You may be seated and we will meditate on the words of our first hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us do them. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with the reading of Holy Scripture. First reading Isaiah, chapter 5, 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard of a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones. He planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. And hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, Judah judge between me and my, vine, and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done it in it? I was expected to it I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it will be devoured. I'll break it down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. I shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with berries and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah. Are his pleasant planting, he expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Psalm 80, chapter 80, verses 7 through 15. Look down from heaven, O God, behold and tend this vine. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You clear the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendro, its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by will have its grace? And the wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, God hosts, look down from heaven, behold and attend to God, preserve what your right hand is <laughs> Second reading, Philippines chapter 3. Verses 4b to 14. 
If anyone else has a reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persector of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I held, these have these I have come to regard a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things. I, I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained things or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make my own because Christ Jesus is made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able that we might read the gospel acclamation together in preparation for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for this day is written in the 21st chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. 
The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace you and peace from God our Father and from our living Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's easy to read today's Old Testament and Gospel text and think, boy, those people sure messed up. How could they have been so greedy, so heartless, so presumptuous? They got just what they deserved. They had it coming. It's nice to read the Bible as history. Stories about ancient people in ancient times. Situations that have no real bearing on our lives today. It's nice to stand back and be able to objectively evaluate the behavior of others and point out their flaws and their shortcomings. But we must remember that whenever we point a finger at others, there are three more pointing right back at us. Maybe that's why Jesus to, chose to do so much of his teaching in parables. Stories about someone else that overemphasized their problems and their sinfulness so they would be easy to identify. And just when folks were shaking their heads and muttering, how could they? Jesus would burst their bubble and explain, you are they. Sometimes we need to be brought up short because we don't believe we're sick. We're in such a state of denial that we truly believe the problem is not ours. And we are completely justified in how we think and how we live. We complain that our children somehow feel entitled and yet must confess that children learn what they live. As people of privilege, by nature of where we live and what we've received, we often believe that we deserve or have a right to whatever we need or even want. After all, we've worked hard all our lives, so why shouldn't we reap the benefits? And even more interesting, we can live this way all the while believing we are moral and upright, so justified in our actions. Are we really any different than the tenants in today's scripture readings? Jesus is attempting to explain life in the kingdom living in response to God's blessings and expectations, not just figuring out what it takes to make it in this world, because we are called to be part of a transforming of this world instead of conforming to it. Like us, the tenants in the gospel lesson probably started out as decent, hardworking folks who just wanted to get ahead. We can relate to that. Like Paul in the text from Philippians, we take pride in our nationality, our status, our hard work, our religious enthusiasm, our moral standing, our success, all things that get us ahead 
in this world. But when Jesus brought Paul up short on the road to Damascus, struck him blind and then restored his sight, Paul came to realize that all in which he took so much pride was mere garbage. And what was truly worthwhile was a personal relationship with his Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And Paul's life changed. It was no longer about him, but about Christ and Christ crucified. Paul realized that he didn't know it all and wasn't perfect, but that he knew and could rely upon the one who was. He owed his life in this world and the next to God in Christ. And the rest of Paul's life was spent attempting to live and speak and share that good news. We are the current tenants in God's vineyard. How will we respond to all that God has provided? Will we recognize our responsibility to the owner? Will we cultivate the fruits of the kingdom, justice, kindness, humility, and love? Or will we attempt to rely on our own devices and try to usurp the kingdom to satisfy our own desires? As kingdom people, I think we must truly ponder why there is still poverty, hunger, abuse, and injustice. Not just in the world, but in our own country as well. A country wherein kingdom people bristle whenever anyone attempts to remove the phrase under God from our national pledge. We have the kingdom. What are we doing with it? Are we building monuments to wealth? but rejecting the very cornerstone of life. We come today not with pointing fingers, but prepared to be confronted, to have our eyes opened and our villainy exposed. Not for the sake of condemnation and destruction, but in order to be forgiven, fed, and strengthened, and equipped for amendment of life and kingdom living in the here and now. Thanks be to God, we do not live with an absentee landlord, but with one who is ever-present, ever-caring, and ever-providing, not just for us, but for all. The kingdom is ours. Might we always be receptive and responsive that we live into and enjoy its fullness, both now and forever. Amen. I invite you to listen to the the, uh, music and contemplate the words of our hymn of the day.
to stand as you are able that together we might confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray now for the church, for the whole people of God, for our world. Gracious Lord, as church, you have called us to serve in your vineyard. You have not made us the owners that vineyard, you have told us to care for it and tend it. Lord, you have provided blessing upon blessings to us from that vineyard. And we ask that as we care for it, you would remind us of your care for us and help us to reach out to our neighbors here at home and across the world Thank you. 
be with you always. And also be with you. I would encourage you to be creative in a non-physical way of sharing the peace with one another. God's peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> continue to thank you for the offerings that you share, for the work not only of this congregation, but also for the work of our synod throughout this um, Western North Dakota, sharing in the ministries of the synod and also sharing in the ministries of the church at large, both throughout our Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who are trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Receive the blessing. May you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with song. And may the love of God continue to give you hope and keep you strong. And may you run and not be weary. May your life be filled with joy. And may the road you travel always lead you home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our sending song is The Lord Now Sends Us Forth, a reminder that as you leave, please exit uh, beginning with the back rows and then moving towards the front. The Lord Now Sends Us Forth.